Hello, so today I want to talk about the casual friendliness of Weathering Waves because it's something that a lot of people have been concerned about in terms of people are saying that it's a very try hard game and it's meant for those try hard players. But I feel like Weathering Waves, because of the design, actually succeeds very well at being a casual friendly and free to play friendly game. And there are quite a few reasons for this that we're going to talk about in this video. And I'm going to go through a couple different aspects because I feel like all of these aspects contribute equally to why this game is going to be very casual friendly and it's going to make it so that casuals will be able to have a good time in the game as well. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is the fact that you can always out level content and I feel like in this way Weathering Waves has parallels to Elden Ring. Now Elden Ring is a game that can be very casual or very sweaty. If you want to fight all the bosses without getting all this OP gear and without leveling up all the way then you can and it's going to become a lot harder but at the same time you could also out level everything get a lot of runes get better weapons play specific builds use summons use magic do all this stuff that's going to make it a lot easier for you to progress through the game and weathering waves has that same aspect as well if you take time to properly build your characters and level them up and get your echoes then you'll be able to do the content a lot easier now you may be thinking, well, isn't spending a lot of resources to leveling up your characters not something that casuals are going to do? However, in this day and age, I would actually disagree with this. Back when Genshin came out, you saw videos by Mtash, right, getting like 5 million views because it would be like how to 10 extra damage and it would be the most simple tips in the world. But nowadays, millions and millions of people have already seen those videos and they know how to build characters in gacha games because Genshin and I guess you could say HSR too, but more, more of Genshin existed kind of as people's first first gacha game and first experience of gacha so they learned a lot about the systems from that game so now coming into another gacha game if people haven't played genshin or other gacha games before they now know how the build system works and while these people are casuals they know so much about the game and about building characters to the point where they can figure this shit out on their own incredibly fast right they don't need a guide that's saying put artifacts on your characters they're like oh i see this echo oh okay this is the same thing as relics are or artifacts are oh i need to level up my weapons and skills of course i need to level up my weapons and skills this is a no-brainer all these casual people already know this stuff by now to the point where when they're coming into weathering waves they're going to be able to make their characters very strong and out level content very easily just because they already have been through this sort of thing before there are casuals with 36 star spiral abyss there are casuals who have 36 star moc or casuals have 12 star pure fiction the casuals are getting a lot better and the average level of a casual has gone up quite a bit so this is one of the reasons why if you're just a normal casual gotcha player you're going to have a very good time playing through the game and if you find a boss too hard you can just out level it while some of the hardcore players may be like i'm going to spend two hours on this boss or five hours on this boss doing it under leveled it's leaving content for the newer players right or the more casual players and the hardcore players and i think being able to strike this balance through allowing out leveling of content is the best way to do it and that's one of the reasons why elden ring was so successful and why i think weathering waves will be successful in the same element next i would like to talk about the king of casual stuff and that is exploration and weathering waves exploration max and i mean you may be like what the hell is exploration maxing if you look at weathering waves the movement for exploration is so much better than a lot of other open world games you can traverse the map so easily so fast they even have like a motorcycle mount and they're doing it in a way where it's also not too fast right if you played power world for example and you got jet dragon jet dragon jet dragon I don't remember the name. You could fly around the map super fast. And that kind of ruins the open world aspects because once you get that boss and once you start to get flying mounts, it kind of ruins the overall exploration gameplay because you're just traversing so fast and you're in the air. You're not walking around. You're not traversing through the mountainscapes and the landscapes anymore. But Weathering Waves is keeping it to ground having a ground mount and being able to run up walls and having all of this stuff so the world feels more alive. If you also pair this with the fact that the echo system incentivizes exploration by causing you to go around the map to co get copies of echoes to level up your data bank, this is a very good way to incentivize exploration, right? Normally you just see, oh, well, I'm just going from chest to chest, picking up mints, getting my inventory, but no, Weathering Waves actually incentivizes exploration, which will mean that the casual players will have a reason to explore. And it's actually a very enjoyable experience exploring 
going if you have in Wuthering Waves, just because you go from point A to point B, you go from echo to echo, leveling up. There's so much stuff to do, right? That a casual player is going to have so much fun dealing with the system and having a good time exploring the world that not a lot of other games are able to provide because they get stale after a while. And the uh, amazing movement, we already talked about that, but that just contributes even more by being able to run up walls, not having to spend five minutes climbing up a mountain. Like you could say that that adds to the immersion, but it's honestly just kind of boring. Like if you've explored Liyue trying to get all the Geoculus, it's just like, nah. And I know I keep on making comparisons to Genshin, but this is where a lot of people are going to be coming from. And it's one of like the only open world gotcha games that has been super successful so that's why i'm making the comparisons there so i know people are tired of hearing comparisons to genshin's but it is heavily inspired by it so i think it is important to bring up the next thing i'd like to talk about is the simple combat system right you may be thinking well isn't the combat system for weathering waves more complicated than other combat systems and sure it is more complicated but it's also still very simple like you have your intro skills out skills trills concerto effect like you don't have that much like it's still only like what, like four buttons and then an intro and outro skill. And you have to build up your gauge. There's a little sound effect when you build up your gauge. It's not a complicated combat system. So people are going to be able to pick it up very fast, but it is something that is going to be hard to master, right? Simple to learn the basics, hard to master. So if you want to put in that time to master the system and get really good at everything, absolutely perfect at parrying, absolutely perfect at dodging, you can. That's going to appeal more to the hardcore players at the beginning, but casual players as time goes on will start to get even better having these appeals to not only casual players but also hardcore players is going to make the game able to succeed because it'll go into markets that haven't been tapped yet right there aren't gotcha games right now that appeal to the super competitive and the super casual at the same time and a lot of those games that do are pvp focused games right and the problem with pvp focused games is that they typically appeal more to the whales and are less free to play friendly but this game doesn't have pvp so it's appealing to the casual friendly and the hardcore without pvp which is something that gotcha games just have a hard time doing and that's why i think it, the game is going to succeed and if you're a casual then playing this game is going to be very fun to try out for you and i would recommend pretty much everyone watching this video to at least give it a try given a couple of hours of your time just to see whether you like it or not i just wanted to talk about this video because a lot of people have been questioning whether or not it's casual friendly or not and i do think it's very casual friendly so to all the casual mint pickers out there to all the casual players out there you will have a very fun time enjoying this game if it is for you some people may not enjoy the game but if you don't, unfortunate, you could just play another game anyway, so it's all good. That's it for today's video. I will see you guys later.